Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We're outside again with tequila. And I just want to answer a question that uh, somebody had asked me. And that question is quite simple. What is positive training? Okay, I've been asked this actually a couple of times. And I am going to answer that question because it's actually really simple and really complicated at the same time. So it's simple to describe, but it's complicated to pull off. So positive training is simply teaching your dogs to do what you want by making them want to do what you're asking. So there's no force, no punishment, no shame involved. Okay, so that sounds easy, but it's not. Okay, because you can't get angry. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> so how do we accomplish this? Through positive reinforcement. It's really, really po important that you use a lot of positive reinforcement. You have to make interactions and training fun. You have to treat your dog respectfully. So you have to treat them like they're a critter with their own mind, their own thoughts. And apparently we're looking at the pony because we like to look at the pony. Hi, pony. So you have to treat your dog with respect. And training should feel like play. So he's going to go over here. We're going to go and play with the kitty. We like kitties. So training should feel like play and be fun. Okay? You want to embrace your dog's nature. And all dogs have nature. They all have a nature. And then we're going to go under the table because it's fun. Crawl, crawl, crawl. Crawling under a table. That's fun. Also, it's sunny. So we like to be out of the sun. Um, so when you embrace your dog's nature, you have to kind of let them guide you. Which is not easy for a lot of people. And you want to re reward desired behavior with treats, praise, lots of love, lots of stuff. So, sounds easy, it's not. But the end goal is to make your dog view obedience as fun and joyful. It's making obedience worth their while and making that training mutually beneficial. Hi, guys. Yes, he's bringing buckets. Shh. Shh. Trying to film the dog. Be quiet. Oh, we're going to go play in the trees. Cat's up a tree. You can't climb. Ha ha. Sucks to be you. <laughs> yeah. If you want to play, Bowser, she can't climb trees, just so you know. <laughs> Poor Tequila. Oh, come here, sweet pea. Did she get away? Oh, this is a sad life. Sad, sad life. That's okay. Okay, we're going to go do something else, because we can't play with Bowser. Anyway. <laughs> Don't worry about that. So... Through positive training, you also learn to communicate with your dog. Okay, so as you work together to get what you want, you also end up learning to talk to each other. Even though you can't speak dog and she can't speak English, you do figure out how to talk. And we're going to go look at the play with the kitty. We love kitties. Tequila loves cats, by the way. So, one of the ways you use this positive training method is to show respect for your dog's concerns. An example, and I'll talk about this more in later videos, but a good example is barking. If she starts barking, I really should go find out what on earth we're barking about. I shouldn't just tell her to shut up and go lie down, because that's not going to help. She's barking at something. So I should go find out what's up. That's what I should do. And that's what I do do. I go, I figure out what's going on. And once I know what it is, follow her around the corner. Where are we going? We're around the other corner. Where are we going? Anyway, once you know what they're barking at, one, you assess it. <laughs> you figure out why they're barking at it. Why is it such a concern? Why are we walking around the gazebo? This doesn't even make sense, but okay. She, tequila! Where are you going? Just back to... Hi. Yeah, I just want to know where you're going. I'm not saying you can't keep going there, but we're just going in circles. Anyway, so... Dogs are crazy. Anyway. So you follow your dog, find out what's up, why they're barking, 
And then maybe it's something you have to address. Maybe it's something you don't really care about. And that's fine if you don't really care about it. But you don't tell them to shut up and go sit down. Instead, what I do is I let her know, thank you. I needed to know that. Thank you. But that's enough. And she understands that I acknowledge what she was barking at. It's not a big deal. We should go lie down. But I don't tell her to shut up and go lie down. Because that's not being respectful of what she's trying to tell me. And she is trying to tell me something if she's barking like that. She's trying to tell me, with the barky barks, that something's going on and I really should pay attention. Even if it's only a little bit of paying attention. Also, why is there a tomato on the ground? It's a question. It's a tomato. Whatever. We're not talking about tomatoes. <laughs> so, when you do that, when you respond to the barking... By, okay, let's go find out what it is. Thank you for telling me what it is. But that's enough. Then she learns that you will take her concerns seriously. And she'll be more likely to tell you if something's up. Which is what you want from a livestock guardian. So livestock guardian dogs, like I've said several times, are not quite the same when it comes to training. You don't want blind obedience. She needs to know that she should tell you something. Okay, that's important. She has to know that you will respond when she tells you something otherwise what's the point why would she tell you something if there's no point and apparently we want to go back in the house and that's fine so the benefits of positive training are it's more relaxing for you it's more relaxing for the dog because she's not nuts all the time and it's ethical it's effective and they obey because they want to okay that's all good so what's the downside there's always a downside the downside is it takes forever so you can take a squirrely dog and with standard obedience training you can take them and turn them into a pretty darn good dog inside six weeks right no big deal however positive training can take a year and i've said that before it can take a year to train your livestock guardian because if you're harsh it's going to take a year anyway to be honest because if you're harsh with your dog they're going to they're sensitive creatures. Livestock guardians are sensitive dogs. And they are supposed to work with you. So oh, that's a bug. So they are supposed to work with you. So if you're harsh with them, it sets you back anyway, to be honest. So it's going to take a year no matter what training method you use. So you might as well use one that's fun for you, fun for her. The hard part, though, is you can't get upset. Okay. These are empty, by the way. So somebody always asks, well, what if they drink that? They won't. It's empty. So it, it's, it's an effective training method. It's a fun training method. But it's important to realize that it takes a long time. Could you have faster results with another method? Sure. Sure, you could. You could absolutely have faster results. However, you probably won't. So it's a good method for quietly and effectively making sure your dog does what she needs to do. It's a good method for livestock guardians specifically because of the type of work they have to do and because some of their work's going to be when you're not there because you can't be out with your flock 100% of the time. So because of that, and Whiskey's over here. Hi, Whiskey. Because of that, it's an effective training method, but be prepared for it to take a while. Be patient. You're going to need patience anyway, <laughs> okay? If you're going to raise a livestock guardian dog, you're going to need to be patient anyway, to be honest. Why are we back behind the hay? There's nothing back there except sleds. You don't need a sled. Your dog. Also, our aquarium. <laughs> so, honestly, whiskey, why are your bum in there? Get out of there. Tequila, you're going to have to go all the way around now because there's not enough room for you to turn around. Yeah. Oh, you did turn around. Maybe you are more agile than I thought. Did you just clunk your head? Okay, you're not, you're not that agile. Anyway. <laughs> so, yes, positive training means always positive. It means no hitting, no shaming, no yelling, no screeching at your dog because she chased a chicken. It's about redirection, about being calm, about being patient, but it's going to take you a long time, okay? 
Just like this video took me way too long to make because I'm apparently getting distracted. But <laughs> it should have been a three minute video. It's like a 10 minute video. Whatever. That's fine. We're not going to worry about it. What are we looking at? Ah, there's dogs down the road and they're over there. She doesn't like that. Okay. That's about it for us here at Anderson Acres. We'll see you tomorrow.